of one, of one, of one, two, three. Letter said, letter said, send, send your letters, letters for, for letter said. Okay, I'll just put it together. <laughs> Don't even worry. Hey, you've landed on a letter said. That's right. This is where we read your inane, weird, funny uh, letters about growing up in church or weird things that have happened to you related to religion. So thank you for listening. And you know you have these. We all have them. Yeah. And, you know, uh, some of them might embarrass you. And those are the ones that I the actually... The good ones. I know. I know. <laughs> Send in the ones where you believe something really weird or you just were very naive in life and you went out into the world um, outside the bubble and Send things Send in... Uh, I would happen. like to know what people wore under their robes to get baptized in. And was it see-through? You know that I've written the whole thing about boob gate with me first <laughs> realizing that my body was shameful was during baptism as a kid. Oh. So I know. It's not shameful. The animals who want to rape you are the shameful ones. Oh, no. We're back they to didn't, the ducks, everyone. They didn't tell it to us that way. No, the teenage boys. I know. I know. Um, well, or, one, or the grown men. <laughs> that sounds totally terrible because I was seven. But let's move well. on. <laughs> let's get out of pedoph- pedophilia and move on to um, you. Letters. Yeah, no, um, subscribe and all oh, that. Oh, okay. So apparently it's very helpful if you subscribe to the podcast and then go on whatever podcatcher whatever medium you mm-hmm. listen to podcasts on, and do a little rating. And I think those are all stars that um, are probably similar. Like everybody goes up to five stars. Is that how it works? Yeah. So guess how many ratings we've had? Not reviews. Fourteen. Ratings. That people 14. give us stars. Fourteen. You're still sticking with fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to be pleasantly surprised. A hundred and one. Oh my gosh! I know. That's so cool. I know. So like, much better than fourteen. And that people actually go out of their way to give us stars because it really isn't going out of the way. We're not giving you a star, but it right. is really nice. And then we have reviews that helps a lot. And we post your reviews. We scratch out your name and we post them. (laughs) And then we put your name on the dark web with your address. (laughs) I I just feel like we should talk again about the reviews for the Anne Frank diary. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm sorry to put that in there for you to edit up. Go find. Yeah. And Frank Diaries <laughs> on Amazon and read the reviews. It's horrible. That are People, written by teenagers forced to read the book. Yeah, yeah. And, or the mothers who are like, she complains <laughs> too much. I mean, she everyone was a teenager. Too much. Oh my God. So okay. this week, um, well, just yesterday, although this is going to be posted in a few weeks. Someone who supports us on Patreon, thank you very much, um, sent me something about, have you heard of this bar in Atlanta? And you used to live in Hotlanta. It's called Sister Louise's Church. Mm-hmm. And it is run and owned by a priest that left the church. Oh, yeah, yeah. You do know about it? No, but we have a letter to go along with that. And I'm wondering if it's the same person. I wonder. I don't know. Well, I will read that one first. But it looks like uh, they're doing really well, and and they have everything um, that's connected. You know, it's churchy, funny stuff. Mm -hmm. And then— Oh, got to go to that. This person um, who lives in Chattanooga was driving to it, and then she wrote, Oh, my God, just pulled up behind a car with a deconversion therapy sticker on the back, which I replied, That is not us, (laughs) because (laughs) I checked 
And um, let me do a little bit of opposite of how many people have rated us. How many people, how many stickers have we sold? 14. And that would be off by one. Four. <laughs> so I doubt, and some person bought two. But no, one, somebody who you know in person got some, so she could have given it to somebody. It could have been her. That happened to be at that bar in Atlanta. Yes. Okay. I mean, you don't live that far. But then that will make me believe in God again. And then we've got to do a whole <laughs> new podcast. Well, we both came up with the letter so jingle independently of one another, too, to the theme of Spider-Man. I know. And that's weird. And that's a sign. It is. Also, 2020, has it started out like a big shit fest for you? I see that it has for everyone else. Like yesterday sucked a little bit. But no, no. Like I haven't had, I mean, sadly, I have friends who, you know, there's some illness going on. There's death. There's no, I have not had that. I have come okay. across someone taking up two parking spaces. So that's that's it. <laughs> Karen. For me. That's I mean, that's as Aaron. shitty as mine has been. Well, um, let's see. So for me it's three deaths. <gasps> or one is imminent because the hospice person is there. Are these like people you work with? One is one of my good friends' parents. Oh that's that's right. You told me that. And yeah. two are who I work with. Oh and, my God. and And guess what? They're all super nice. They're all awesome yeah. people totally. who were always lovely to me when we passed. Ugh. Unbelievable. It's all like that whole karma and live a good life thing. It's bullshit. Like, yeah. <laughs> Do it. No. But... It do it just for doing it. Yeah, has nothing to do with longevity because I remember when I was scared of dying, which, well, I am right now, too. Um, <laughs> I was like, how'd you get over that? Let's have another <laughs> podcast about that. Uh, there's the book. Uh, no, there's the verse in the Bible that says, if you honor your father and mother, your days will be long, like you'll live a long life. And I'm like, right. okay, that is my insurance. But <laughs> all these people who are super nice, I'm sure are obviously super nice to their parents or were. So that is also a bullshit. See, but, and I always think, I was telling someone yesterday, I said, you know what? My mom made a great decision sticking me in a school where they just pounded it into you be good, be good, be good, or else, because now I, I was tricked. I, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm out there behaving, and, yeah. um, and people who are out there doing everything for themselves and being shitheads are, you know, thriving. Exactly. And not that I'm not thriving. I don't mean that, but... I know what you're saying. They didn't say, if you're a shithead, you're also going to do fine. Yeah, yeah. They didn't tell you that. I know. Oh. I know. <laughs> and um, and that's what I'm always like, you know, wait a minute, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, these people are atheists and they're still, you know, um, yeah, doing... and they're it. giving things away. They're not doing something to put more money in the pockets of people who also have as much money as they do. Right. I mean, or, they are to an extent. Or raping uh, young boys like the Catholic uh, Church. So, or that. I know. So uh, I heard something really interesting on a podcast once, like one of the NPR ones about leaders, and it made me think exactly of every president Everyone in a strong position, not only did they mm-hmm. have to sort of walk over people, yep. but a majority of them had to take big risks. And that is also risky behavior, right? Because you got to get mm-hmm. there. So when they become in their position, they don't stop being risk takers. So that's right. why we had the Senator Weiner send pictures of his <laughs> wiener or 
you know, some of these other people that you were just like, how in the world, why would they do that? They know they're being watched. And it's mm-hmm. the same with pastors and priests and everyone. Like, they had You don't to, just take off your behavior like a sweater. Right, right. Man, I wish I could. I really <laughs> want to not care about what people think. I want to move back to South Florida, hang out with oh. Ira and Myrtle, and push people at the buffet line. <laughs> That's what I want to oh. do. I know. All right, so we have our letters today, um, and we're going to end on a special one, but uh, you can go ahead. Oh, because you know. What? Because you know what the one we're ending on is. Okay. That's right. All right, so I'm going to start with this one. Trash. You don't know (laughs) shit, girl. It's all a surprise. So I'm going to read the one that pertains to what we were just talking about, the bar that was the God theme. We okay. should look that up and see if it's still open. It is. I mean, he was in it, right? Because what you sent me was something from 2000, I don't know what, before now. I, like, just last December or November? Um, No, just a couple days ago. Okay. Or yesterday. I'm the confused. The Sister Louisa's thing? Yeah. Isn't that the bar? It could be. It but says July 15, 2012. I mean, I guess it's still open. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's still open. I thought you okay. meant the letter came a few years ago. I'm like, hmm. I, I went back in time like Spider-Man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wrong okay. wrong hero. Hey, uh, before we get started, I just want to read the comment that somebody put on Instagram. It said, Karen Bonnie, your Facebook reminds me of those Christian couples who have one account together because she can't trust him not to go snooping for porn stars or strike up <laughs> conversations with exes. So I asked the question, which one of you is being naughty? <laughs> I love it because, yes, we still know some people who do the old, you know, Jeff and Stacy, all one word, Smith. Right. And you're like, oh. <laughs> yep, don't stray. Because right. I'm going to find out. Because you, because God forbid you can't figure out that they've made a second burner account. Yeah, exactly. Please. Okay. Yep. Name Jeffrey Weiner. Okay. Although there is one friend of mine, I will say this quickly, who is very technologically not savvy. Mm-hmm. And I have always suspected that something's going on behind her back with technology that she has no idea about. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know. Tell her to I call don't us. really mean suspected, but if it were to come out one day that, you know, her husband was doing something, I would have been like, yeah, because you had no clue how to just look at a phone and go, why are you texting? Uh, anyway. Yeah. All right. So the first letter has to do with a church themed bar uh, that was, what did you say? It was owned by a priest who yeah. was not a priest anymore. Correct. So, uh, let's see. This person says it's okay to use their first name and city. His name is Brad. Um, let's see. Hi, Karen and Bonnie. I love the podcast. And although I was raised Catholic in Pennsylvania, I've experienced a lot of similarities to the stories on your show. Mm-hmm. Um, this story is from my senior year of Catholic high school. The school had hired a new priest in his early 30s who went by the name Father Steve. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) All I'm picturing is Steve from 90210. (laughs) Oh, I'm picturing. I don't. um, Oh, gosh. There's an actor that's geeky that I'm picturing. But, I mean. Oh, I'm also picturing Billy Zabka, the the bad boy blonde from, like, the karate movies and. Uh, yeah. Everything else in the 80s. Didn't so Father Steve. No. He, I think so. Okay. We're I just going to look it up while you're reading your letter. Great. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, don't go on yet I, because. I don't think Billy Zubka died. I mm-hmm. went to a party at his house once, by the way. Oh, really? Which yeah. Is so hair? we're at this party. We're at this party, and and I was like, whose house is this? And and they're like, that guy over there. And I'm like, 
wait a minute. <laughs> Is that Billy Zobka? Wow. And it was. Did he karate you? No, but somebody told me that they were going to steal one of his CDs. I was like, don't do that. <laughs> Get his Stone Temple Pilots. Put it in your pocket. <laughs> so Father Steve was very much the, quote, young, cool, youth group leader, quote, type. And kids joked that he was just a frat bro who dressed up as a priest once and never took off the costume. <laughs> 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 he was also he was also very handsome and would flex his muscles. He would even do that thing where he bounced his pecs back and forth. Oh my god, <laughs> in a priest robe? Oh, and don't you have to have a biblical but name? I think our <laughs> But didn't our youth minister do that? Oh, no, we I mean, had, he wasn't There was a guy. But it was the bodybuilder yep. guy. Yep. Okay, that's who it was. Okay. <laughs> The one who shared with your boyfriend, right? I name yes. Who went to your boyfriend's house uh, to try to no, witness No, that was to him? a different one. Oh, we had two right. bodybuilders. That's right. <laughs> Our church. Okay, so that thing where he bounced gross. his text back and forth to impress the ladies. <laughs> Shudder. <laughs> Long story short, this guy was taken seriously for a whole year, but as soon as I got the, to college the next fall. I heard he was gone from the school. When I asked what happened, I was told that with great shame, he had gotten the girl's field hockey coach pregnant and was leaving the priesthood. Oh. Oh Last I heard, he sells real estate and couldn't be happier. So I guess <laughs> some people make it out of even the priesthood. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. I love the real estate part. But, yeah. I am so relieved that it wasn't the girl's field hockey captain. Yeah, At least yeah. it was the coach. It was definitely age-ish appropriate. Right. But how does that even happen? Don't they have to have, like, names from the Bible? So was he Father Stephen and he just tried to make it cooler? Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That uh, <laughs> like, like they're royalty. They have to pick an official royal name. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, um, Father Steve. <laughs> Well, Father Steve knows how to score on the field with a stick. (laughs) Okay, so I'm not going to read a letter per se, but (laughs) I am going to, we've gotten a few little comments that are really interesting. Um, I'm not going to name this person, but uh, someone said, thanks for doing the podcast and being a voice for those who formerly believed. And I think that means, obviously, there are people who just can't voice it. You know, whatever's going on in their lives, they have to stay undercover, much like you, Bonnie. And then he wrote, I was an assistant pastor for years, and I left the church last April. After years of doubts, and today this person's a happy agnostic, and that it hasn't been easy, but it's been freeing, and they just wanted to thank us for the impact we're making, which I'm like, again, oblivious to any impact, especially on people who have had like a place in the church and have left it. It's insane. Um, yeah. And I, this is the second person who has told us that they were uh, formerly in the clergy leader pastor role and have left. And I just want to give a shout out again to the organization Recovering from Religion and for people who are in the clergy, The Clergy Project. Go look at those and they have lots of helpful little things that might be of service to you because we offer no help. I I am admittedly short-sighted because it was so long ago for me. Right. I've had years to process stuff and think about things and then still be resentful of comments idiots parents made to me. Yeah, exactly. 30 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) 
yeah, someone right. on our Facebook because we went ahead and posted the um, interview that I did with the Graceful Atheist as one of our January, hey, we're taking some time off to work on the podcast, here's this, and someone was like, I want to hear Bonnie's. And I, My what? Your deconversion story. And I thought, I didn't want to say, well, it took four seconds on a basketball gym bench. (laughs) So I don't know how, like, if that could make an hour podcast, maybe it could. Not an hour, but that was was definitely where everything started. And then, I mean, I tried when I was in college to get involved with, you know, the the Baptist kids. And I was like, hmm. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, a couple other times and it just, they, yeah. Anyway. So I can tell more later. Sure. Do you want to read another one? But I was like a slow backslide. (laughs) I don't think I would technically be considered not a member of our church. Oh, they keep us on the rolls so that they can have those numbers. Like, you have to write I might in. still be on a roll. Yeah, totally. <laughs> They're canceled. <laughs> All right, so is that your, your in-between thing and I do another letter? Yeah, because then I've got a longer okay. one, and then I, yeah. Okay. All right, so this person says it's okay to read their first name, but they don't give their first name. They give, oh, no, it says S. So maybe she just wants us to read S. Maybe that's her name. Don't make fun of it. It's not. I know what it is, but I won't reveal it. (laughs) (laughs) But she's from Westchester, New York. So watch out. I know. There's only one person with an S there. Are you S? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Here's my story. The backstory is on the long side, but the punchline is worth it, she says. <laughs> I grew up in a northern Virginia suburb of Washington, D.C., which I somehow never realized was part of the Bible Belt and was very much in denial about being part of the South. It turns out that the majority of an ultra-conservative congregation working for the national government doesn't make a church any less conservative. Although getting to overhear witness accounts of objects being thrown at Bill Clinton's head during the previous work week was pretty special. What? I don't know. So people saw objects being thrown at Bill Clinton's head because he was a Democrat? Maybe. (laughs) Um, Of course, I always just assume that anything thrown at someone's head is a shoe. (laughs) Right. Um, Or a bag of poop. (laughs) <laughs> um, living in asia as a missionary the old bag of poop throwing was a big thing mm-hmm. to really? the politicians yeah <laughs> i mean that's a did, lot of thought who who did throw a shoe at somebody yeah it was in someone, a press conference right yeah i will it, not pause to look it up okay You're welcome. In sixth grade, my family moved closer to D.C. for a shorter work commute, and I had the great misfortune of attending a very fundamentalist, (laughs) that's all caps, uh, or no, just V and F, (laughs) Baptist school. Didn't capitalize Baptist. I love that. (laughs) Uh, I had the great misfortune of attending a very fundamentalist Baptist school for a year and a half. Up to this point, I had accepted the downsides of a Christian school as better than the devil children, (laughs) scary science teachers, inevitable martyrdom, and drug cartels I would apparently have to face if I ever went to public school. That's right. Oh, all right. I will pause right now to tell you when I switched to public school for the one year we weren't in school together. Yeah. It was uh, your brother and I share this because he went there as well. Uh, neither one of us would go to the bathroom during the day. Yeah. <laughs> so your mom always said he would race home, <laughs> like <laughs> straight for the bathroom because he didn't want to go into the bathroom. That's all right. And I just didn't want to go to the public school bathrooms because the girls would smoke in there. And that was terrifying. Yeah. You um, don't want to blend with the secular. Just No, I didn't want to get urine. beat up. 
You know. Well, the only time I could pee was in uh, in PE class. <laughs> I never put those together. Um, in phys ed, when we would be changing out, I'm like, okay, no one's going to the bathroom here. Right. It's pretty, pretty wide open. I probably won't get, you know, forced to smoke. <laughs> um, anyway. Put this so. in your mouth. Breathe in. That was it. When I went to the high school you and I both went together to, I was horrified. And then changing our clothes in the gym was just a yeah. shocker for me. Yeah. And I had one year up on you about changing out yeah. in front of people. Only my yeah. husband was supposed to see that. And I remember <laughs> I would like hide in a corner and yep. I was removing one shirt and um, I had one of those charm necklaces. Mm -hmm. It fell on, you know, slipped out and then touched me in the chest again. And I screamed because I thought it was a roach. <laughs> Everyone turned to me and my warmers bra with you know a little <laughs> bow in the middle and so yeah I was horrified oh my god yeah so that's just we shared your husband. fears about public school and they weren't even serious but they were scary all yeah. right so she says um these are the things I would apparently have to face if I ever went to public school the Baptist school though was definitely not better my first day at public school, I was surprised and excited when I realized that we were actually allowed to talk in the hallways between <laughs> classes. Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> oh, the hallways in public school, though, that was the terrifying part. There were so many kids, I was afraid they were going to step on my Bernardo sandal. <laughs> I saw certain people doing a certain thing, and I was in the hallway scarred. Yeah. What? Uh, a girl stroking her boyfriend over his jeans, and I was like, what, what is happening? <laughs> yep. So, well, all right. So her first day of public school, she got to talk in the hallways between class. <laughs> That's great. Uh, let's see. Then she says, I found out recently that this is the same school that Mike Pence's wife now teaches art at. Oh, the man. discovery was mind-boggling, but not surprising, and sort of explains a lot. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, she teaches art. Here's the only stuff you're allowed to paint. Yeah, that's it. So Fruit. I was asked to teach um, art, and I don't know why. They were just looking for an art teacher at one of those homeschool Things. So homeschooling, yeah, they teach at home, but they also do like these co-ops where they'll meet once a week sometimes right. and have classes that the teachers that, I'm sorry, not teachers, parents aren't <laughs> either adept in or just want the kids to get together. So I was teaching art and I couldn't believe how many things I had to avoid. Like, yeah, the, the nude ones. But well, it was almost like I couldn't really get into Andy Warhol or, I mean, <laughs> almost anything that just, there isn't a lot totally of. I totally thought you were going to say, I totally couldn't get into Andy Gibb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that is art. And I oh, no. got into it. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, thank you, S. Yeah, thank you. Okay, <laughs> this next one is from Audrey. Hi, Karen and Bonnie. I have a story, but first, I just listened to your episode on Quiverful, and it inspired me to make a suggestion <laughs> for an item to sell in your online shop. Oh, yeah, we have an online shop. Go to deconversiontherapypodcast.com, and you'll see where that shop is. How about cute quilted covers for our birth control pill cases? Oh, my God. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? And then she goes, okay, I, like, really want to do that. So if there's anyone out there that can help us with that, let us know, and we will. Um, with, like, a tiny little handle like your Bible quilted cover would have? Oh, yeah. That would be good. Um and then, oh, have you seen that the kids now will wear these really cute covers for their 
iPod or no, their AirPod ear things. Yeah, they are adorable. And they'll wear them hanging off their belt belt loops. Yeah. So oh, I'm picturing the, the birth loops. control. I see I'm it. I'm picturing on the, the birth uh, control <laughs> hanging uh, off a belt loop. That's <laughs> like, right. I'm DTF. <laughs> Pass oh, it. that doesn't mean you're DTF just because you have birth control. What is DTF? Down to F. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I was thinking of someone in office's uh, initials. I'm like, I was confused. Okay. <laughs> So then she wrote, okay, I was totally kidding about that, but then I just searched for it on Etsy, and she found oh some. Oh, dear. So they can be done. <laughs> we need someone to work with us, and let's get that done. Uh, and she, then she wrote, okay, with that out of the way, here's my story. I was raised in the Roman Catholic Church where they believe in transubstantiation, which means yes. that the communion wafers and wine are turned into the actual body and blood of Christ. I remember when Once I, you consume them, right? Yeah. I remember when I okay. found that out, like... I was bewildered because we practiced the same thing, but we knew that it was just... Represented. Yeah, grape juice and, like, broken crackers. So it was very odd. Okay, when my Catholic school classmates and I were being prepared for our, quote, first Holy Communion at age seven or eight, our teacher instructed us not to chew the wafers with our teeth. Um, Did they think we were going to cause pain to Jesus by using our teeth? Wow. Oh, my God. I, I don't know, but in any regard, we were instructed to consume the wafer by gently moving it around with our tongues to smash it up and then swallow it. So I, it, like, dissolved? Yeah. I'd never thought of that. The problem is that these wafers are of a, of a substance like that of those cheap ice cream cones that have no taste, not the sugar right. or yes. waffle cones. You know the those ones I'm talking about. Those were always my favorite. About. I'm so embarrassed. What? Even as a kid, those were my favorite, the ones that had no taste. I know, me too. Because it didn't detract from the ice cream I, and the jimmies. Well, the special, like, um, on the edge, how they had, like, little squares all around to make it, like, reinforced. I love that part. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that's where they keep the Holy Spirit in the squares. Oh, let me also just tell you right now that we used to go to McDonald's between choir and church on Sundays. And so I remember once I had the little ice cream cone thing. And our youth minister, thinking it was funny, he took it from my hand, bit the bottom of the cone off, and then gave it back to me. <sighs> we, need, we needed the Me Too movement back then. Okay. <laughs> Um, here we go. Anyway, the wafer immediately gets stuck to the roof of your mouth and you just right, have right. to wait it out until it absorbs enough of your spit to start <laughs> sort of melting. One thing that can speed up the melting and unsticking process is to take a sip of the communion wine, but the wine is served to you out of a big chalice from which dozens of other people have already drunk, so I'd typically skip that. The wine also seems to only compound the unfortunate but interesting fact that the communion wafer seems to have a magical power for making your breath stink no matter how thoroughly you brushed your teeth before the service. When everyone opens their mouth to sing the final song after communion, (laughs) brace yourself. (laughs) I do know, like, that musty, like, dank smell. Okay. There is, there's like a smell of mothballs that some people have in their mouth. Yeah. They need. (laughs) Musty, musty mouth. It's it's way for mouth. You just need to, when you smell it, say, are you Catholic? All right. 
Here we go. Did you just take communion? (laughs) Now, because the, quote, consecrated wafer and wine are considered to be the actual body and blood of Christ, it is not permitted to dispose of leftover wine or wafers or even crumbs. They must be consumed. This goes back to an early um, letter said we had of someone who had to finish stuff, and it was not a good... uh, well, yeah. Jesus may had a second coming. Let's put it like that. Okay. Any leftover wafers would be stored in a gold box called the tabernacle to be used at the next <laughs> mass. Whatever crumbs remain would be dumped into the leftover wine, which the priest would oh. then gulp down in its entirety. Okay. I knew... <laughs> I think that was church and priest specific. Oh my God! I, <laughs> I don't hope think so. That's sanctioned <laughs> because I know that that is the history of why priests have alcohol problems is because they do have Lies. to finish off the wine. <laughs> that's, that's the excuse for them drinking. Yeah. But I did, okay. One day... That's awesome. (laughs) One day while we were all singing the final song, filling the sanctuary with the stink of our wretched (laughs) post-communion breath, we noticed the priests spy a pile of communion wafers which must have fallen to the ground unnoticed and lay on a carpet to the side of the altar. Uh Uh-oh. My sister and I watched with eyes wide while the priest (laughs) stealthily scurried over the pile and over to the pile and quickly crammed all the wafers into his mouth like a hungry (laughs) rodent. (laughs) He ate them so quickly that I can only conclude that he chewed. (laughs) <laughs> thanks for your podcast i really enjoy it and have shared it with other ex-religious folks hope you enjoyed this story by the way i've said hi to you on instagram i'm at deconstructing dot illusions so go find her illusions. at deconstructing dot illusions with an eye thank you audrey oh my God. i <laughs> now i feel bad for priests that's no, okay that's i don't specific that's that's right i <laughs> still <laughs> don't i think uh yeah shut down In our Catholic church they church. would have like delegated that to someone else <laughs> no oh <You're> jimmy <laughs> Cram these crackers to your mouth. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the same as the restroom people at your middle school. Put this cigarette in your mouth. Okay. They were gonna. Uh, all right. Okay. Well, that was awesome. So we're ending this one on a very special letter from one of our friends at a another podcast called The Life After. If you haven't heard them, go listen to them. But now here is Brady telling us about something from Christmas, which I know is a while ago, but it's all right. We asked for what happened to you at Christmas. So here's his Mm -hmm. tale. Hey, Bonnie and Karen, this is Brady from The Life After, and I wanted to share my Christmas family story with you. See, I live in St. Louis, Missouri, so I'm like middle of America, and my extended family lives in an even smaller rural town. And over Thanksgiving, I overheard my brother and grandma discussing their Trump supporters, how they are blowing the whole Chick-fil-A thing out of proportion, and how Jim Jordan and Trump are defending America. And they also mentioned how my brother's live-in drug rehab is more successful because because they use the gospel. <laughs> so at Christmas, I wasn't really looking forward to it, but I showed up with my son because uh, he's seven and a great buffer. And I found three pictures of Donald Trump hanging on the walls. Okay, so I'm mostly upset because he has officially outnumbered me and my son, but uh, my grandma gave really good money this year. So I got over it pretty quickly. Anyway, I love this show, and I hope you're all's New Year is starting off great. Bye. <laughs> we also wanted to let you know that we have started a Patreon uh, drive. 
what do we call that? Uh, effort? A uh, campaign. Site. A campaign. Um, I like campaign. I th- yeah. A, a revival. Revival? I yeah. Yep. It's revival month <laughs> on, on our Patreon site. <laughs> so um, there are three different levels of ways that you can financially help out a little bit to support the technology parts, mostly, of this endeavor. And we also um, so, are doing it so we can provide like better um, products for you guys to buy, uh, that we can maybe go to some conferences that are either about podcasts, comedy, or religion. Yeah, um, that's just called church. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, so, um, so, yep, there are three tiers of that, and with each advancing tier of your pledge, you get what was in the first or second tier plus more and things that are included, uh, shout outs. And you can choose what kind of topic we're going to talk about. And thank you notes. I've sent some handwritten thank you notes out. I know the person who sent the thing about the Atlanta bar said she just received the card you sent and she loved it. And yeah. And she said, I'm so proud to support your podcast, which I'm like, what, what? One of these thank yous went to somebody all the way over in England and I had to go buy an international stamp. You were so excited (laughs) about that. Which made me so happy. I know. I know. So thank you for supporting. We really appreciate it. Um, You can even be on the show depending how much you put on there. And we're also putting up uh, soon some special videos just for Patreon supporters because we want them to know how much we truly appreciate it. But for free, send in your funny stories. Go to deconversiontherapypodcast.com. You'll see where you can send it to us and then find us on Facebook, Deconversion Therapy, and on Instagram, same, same, and Twitter. Yeah, and on Facebook, we have a really fun special group that you can ask to be a member of where it's a really nice community. Just please answer the questions. I have people in there who haven't answered the damn questions, and I'm just like, answer them, and you I mean can requesting. let you in. Those are probably people who want to witness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> we know. <laughs> That's right. Well, bless y'all, and have a great week. Bless y'all. Don't be a ship All pile right. and let us out, let us out, let us out. Diddle. Bye. Bye.